Purpose number one is to streamline physician licensing. Right now, it can sometimes take many months for a license to be approved. I hear this not only from physicians, but also clinic managers and hospital uh, HR people. Secondly, the need for office assistance and clarification of their role, both the unlicensed office assistant as well as a certificated office assistant. So, moving right into the bill, first of all, streamlining physician licensing. Sections 1, 2, 9, and 10 put into effect an efficient method of approving physician licenses, and that would be for the board to delegate to the executive administrator the routine approval of, quote, clean, end quote, applications. So when an application for a physician license comes to the board, it is reviewed by the licensing examiner. There needs to be uh, a criminal background check in place, the appropriate credentials, and no previous discipline, for example, on that license if they're coming from another state. Make sure their education is, is appropriate. And if all that is appropriate, then it goes to the executive administrator and then to the board, who individually review these applications. Since the board meets four times a year, this is kind of a ponderous process. So the Department of Commerce actually came to me a year ago and said, this, is, this section of, of licensing has some bumps in it, and we can improve this process. And so this is the improvement. If the application is clean, there's no criminal background history, no discipline, the executive administrator would be able to grant the license. They would all, the administrator would also be able to issue the temporary license and certifications as needed. The bill itself spells out prohibitions to this delegated authority. For the committee's assurance, first of all, this also would include physician assistance, but this process is tried and true. There's actually another licensing board that uses this same procedure and has for about 20 years. It works very well. Moving on, um, sections 10 and 11 allow that the board could designate an additional person who could assist the executive administrator in issuing temporary licenses. So the temporary license is for a, a physician applicant who has, a, who has completed all the re, nearly all the requirements but has a few more things that need to be checked off but is ready really to go to work and this would be a temporary license. Um, Madam Chair, the executive administrator of the State Medical Board is on the line and can clarify any additional questions about this particular piece, which did arise in another committee hearing. Um, and the bills, the bill in sections 10 and 11 outline when this could happen. Um, Madam Chair, this change is urgently needed and widely supported. In fact, I met with some clinic managers on Saturday, and when I spoke about this bill and this particular section, uh, the room broke out into applause. Hospitals wait sometimes a year to get a physician licensed and ready to practice. So this is something they are urgently looking to have done. Right now, the backlog to the board is for the board uh, in terms of applications is about 290 applications in process right now. Uh, this is largely due to telemedicine. Uh, members of this committee, of course, were instrumental in our Medicaid reform measures and other bills. Telemedicine was part of that and has resulted in numerous applications to the board for licensure in Alaska. Again, the executive administrator can go into more depth on the actual numbers if you'd like later. Moving on to the second subject, and that was assistive personnel in physician offices. So in about the mid-1990s, Medicine created um, some assistants to work in their offices called medical assistants. Um, these were less expensive than registered nurses uh, to work in offices to do routine medical tasks. The problem is that these folks um, are not licensed and originally were simply on the job trained. Now, since then, of course, education programs have come 
to come to light. Um, but these folks in Alaska are still unlicensed. These are the folks that when you go to a doctor's office, take your blood pressure, take you back to the exam room, ask you what medications you're on, uh, what your pl chief complaint was, etc. They may give you a, a shot at the end of your visit. Maybe you're getting a flu shot. If your children are coming for immunizations, these are the folks that give those vaccinations. But they are not licensed in the state of Alaska. And so, in fact, these folks working under the direction of a physician are not authorized in our state law. The malpractice carriers for the physicians that practice in Alaska have become aware of this and have let the, their um, insureds know that this needs to be corrected post haste uh, or premiums will be going up because frankly they're delegating routine medical tasks to unlicensed folks. So this is an urgent piece of the bill as well and something again that the board itself brought to me as something needed very quickly. Section 3 authorizes delegation to an unlicensed person. So you'll see that called out there. It will be fleshed out in regulation what specifically could be delegated, and the prohibition is in Section 3 to prohibit delegation of any pain management or opioid-related activities. Section 6 uh, states that these unlicensed assistive personnel, medical assistants, would be doing routine medical duties under the license to practice medicine, podiatry, or osteopathy, and uh, it will define, and it also defines medical assistance under Title 12 criminal procedures. So that would be um, uh, assault of a medical professional. So that's what Section 13 does. So these are unlicensed assistive personnel that we would now recognize that the physician could delegate routine medical tasks. The board itself will de uh, designate and list what those routine medical tasks will be, so you won't see them listed here in the bill. Under the heading of medical assistance, there's another issue. So I just told you about medical assistance being prohibited to dealing with anything having to do with pain management or opioids. You may remember when we did Medicaid reform and the opioid bill, we have a prescription drug monitoring database, and this committee particularly was very specific. No one can access that database unless they are licensed medical people or uh, state troopers. We, we had a list of people, but for medical personnel, they have to be licensed. The medical assistant is not licensed. They're not professionals. However, as the medical, per, medical assistant profession developed since the 1990s, education programs became more robust, and we actually have several education programs in the state of Alaska, Charter College is one, which educates certified medical assistants, but the state does not recognize them. This bill would allow them to be recognized, the certification being recognized as a license, so that then a certified medical assistant would be able to access the PDMP for the physician for whom they worked. This particular issue was not brought forward by the Board of Medicine, but in fact, uh, I attended a Cancer Society forum this last summer at Providence, and there was a pain management specialist there with his office assistant. And when he stood up to speak, he uh, railed on the legislature as people that didn't know what they were doing in terms of the PDMP and how it hampered his practice because he had to look up every patient that he was treating himself in the PDMP because he had no other licensed people in his clinic. And so I talked with him at length at that forum and realized that certified medical assistants are recognized in multiple other states. In fact, Washington State is an example that our Board of Medicine could look to for regulation. But if we were to recognize certified medical assistants, that would solve the problem for clinicians in busy clinics that need to access the PDMP, they would now have another licensed person in their clinic. So um, that is the problem that the certified medical assistant piece of this addresses. Uh, there are national exams. First of all, the education programs exist in Alaska right now, and there are national certifying exams that 
um, certified medical assistants could take to, to earn that certification. Yes, it will cost them some money. That's for they and their physician employers to work out, not this bill. Um, but it is a national rec nationally recognized um, system of exams. So section four calls out the certification process. Section five defines the title, CMA, and it limits its use. Section 12 provides for a penalty for practicing without a license as a CMA. Um, and so that's pretty much the contents of the bill, addressing, first of all, <laughs> expedited licensing, and secondly, providing for delegation of routine medical tasks to medical assistants and a higher level of medical assistant, the certified medical assistant. This is urgently needed, and I've explained to you why those three elements are urgently needed. So Madam Chair, I am happy to take questions. This is supported by the Board of Medicine as well as the Department of Commerce, and we've experienced no opposition to these changes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, sir. In the process, will the board actually approve the final licensure of any uh, doctor that's coming into our state? The background work is done by a delegated representative, the executive director, or as stated earlier. Um, does that, uh, and after that, uh, after that happens, will the board officially approve a list of uh, physicians to practice in our state? <coughs> Madam Chair, Again, for clarification, that would be a question for Ms. Stovern. Okay. However, I will tell you, as I mentioned earlier, this procedure of delegating routine, clean license applications to an executive administrator has been in, in effect for about 15 to 20 years by another major licensing board. Uh, frankly, the Board of Medicine, or excuse me, the Board of Nursing has been doing this for 15 to 20 years. It works very well. These are routine, clean applications. The ones that have questions are held back, and the Board <coughs> of Medicine reviews those individually at their quarterly meetings. So the answer is that a clean application would not go before the board, only those that uh, had some indication that needed further conversation. Madam Chair, it's up to the Board of Medicine how they want to review the ones that the executive administrator have approved. I, I have not prescribed that in the bill. Thank you. With that, um, there is some invited testimony. Thank you, Senator Finance. Thank you, Madam Chairman. For the record, my name is Fred Parity. I'm Deputy Commissioner in Commerce. I want to begin this morning by expressing our appreciation to Senator Giesel for her longstanding commitment to these issues and particularly for her professional insight into them. It's been most helpful. This is a bill that the governor and the department wholeheartedly support. The workload of the medical board has dramatically increased due to telemedicine legislation. You heard reference to that earlier. In 2015, the backlog reached approximately six months in application processing time due to the volume of applications received. As many of you know, fielding complaints from applicants in medical facilities can be time consuming. Alaska's demand for healthcare professionals has only increased since then. In FY217, the division processed 22% more medical licenses and 31% more nursing licenses than in FY16. And already in FY18, we have received fiscal year to date more licenses than we received in the previous fiscal year in its entirety. So basically in eight months, we've already seen 12 months in volume. Through the budget process and recent legislation, we've been able to vote more staff to these programs. But in addition, we at DCCD initiated a strategic planning initiative, which I'm excited to share with you today. This is the good work of government that goes on day to day by our dedicated staff. Stream, as we entered that planning process, streamlining the application process for the healthcare professions emerged as our department's number one priority. So we initiated in this process a comprehensive examination of the application process by a team that does the work day to day. It was a great, I'll use the word joy, to watch that team go to work. We had a facilitator for their work. We did the classic whiteboard process where we whiteboarded out every step of the process and we identified what were called rubs 
where's the friction? Where's, what is slowing us down and where is it? And we identified 27 rubs. Next, we evaluated each of those problems to determine whether the issue served a public safety purpose, met a public safety need, or whether the process was simply outdated or even obsolete. Could it be simplified? Could it be streamlined? And we initiated a three-prong approach to implementing solutions to streamline this licensure process. And the three buckets that we divided those rubs into essentially were small changes through board regulations is bucket one. The Board of Medicine has proactively implemented those changes to their regulations and they're already underway. An example of that kind of rub is we had a board regulation that required a notary to put their stamp on the photo of the applicant. There's several problems with that. The notary is not really able to test a test that that person is the person in the application. They're just attesting that that person is standing in front of them when they put the stamp on it. And notaries are trained to not put their stamp onto the heart of documents and pictures, et cetera. So it, it really served no purpose, didn't meet a sub public safety need and wasn't effective. But if you were absent that notary stamp and you're in the application process, it kicks your application back out to make sure that it gets done. The second bucket of problems, and this is where I'm most excited this morning because the is the IT, improvements in technology. How can we make this process flow better? We've had the ability to accept online renewal applications, but not online new applications. And we, at 10.30 this morning, the team gets its first live look at the IT group's new process to both, it streamlines it and brings it both for renewal and for new applications. And there are exciting things in there. For example, there is as with your PFD, if you're rolling through the application online and you fail to answer a question, you can't proceed. You have to meet each step of the way, make you, make, answer each question. Um, for reference for you, it's common in these applications for incomplete rates to complete applications are normally less than 10%. So setting the process up to bring complete applications in the gate to begin with is a primary way to make this work better. We also, uh, and this is uh, inspiration one of our deputy directors had as she was watching a television commercial, but we're gonna have a feature similar to a Domino's pizza tracker where you can monitor our progress with your application from the website from the uh, online application. So the new applications for licensure can be submitted electronically through the My Alaska platform. This will result in greater efficiencies and more effective communication amongst our staff, our applicants, and the healthcare facilities who we're all trying to serve, the public. Um, we are in the testing phase of that enhancement, and again, the first live rollout to the team is this morning at 10.30. The third bucket of improvements is what's before you now. It is changes to statute that will allow us to more effectively administer these programs. And so the last requirement of the streamlining project is a change in statutes that would improve license processing times while still ensuring public safety, which is of course the ultimate goal. The minor change in this bill will allow the medical board to grant additional authority to the executive administrator to issue medical licenses to applicants that meet the strictest guidelines and allow further delegation to supervisors to expedite and issue temporary licenses. Uh, as an aside, this bill also closes the loop to allow delegation to CMPs regarding PDMP, but that's not the core issue of the streamlining process. So your support of this bill is the next step in ensuring Alaska's healthcare facilities are able to keep their doors open, fully staffed, and able to serve the public in a timely fashion. And we support the bill wholeheartedly. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Are there questions from committee members? Deputy Commissioner, thank you for testifying before Senate Finance today. I'd like to- Public's being well served by what's going on, but right now what I've seen, especially with the health corporations and the, they're trying to fill sites, trying to fill physician, physician positions out in rural Alaska is that a disservice has actually happened because of the lack of streamlining in that you can't get people out there that are 
that have clean licenses, and, and we, we can't guarantee that nothing bad will ever happen. I mean, only God can do that, and we don't put ourselves in positions like that. Um, and so I applaud her get coming forward, with, or Senator Giesel coming forward with this bill. Because uh, when I was on the medical board, I thought it was cumbersome then, uh, but it's even more cumbersome now as you look at some of these concerns that people have, and they're trying to answer them all, but you need some way of making it so that there's not such a backlog for uh, especially people that are having, having a hard time filling those positions. Senator Olson, could you put on the record uh, your status as a physician? I, I think that uh, for the general public, uh, I w I'll ask Senator Giesel to do the same. Uh, we really do uh, depend on, uh, Alaska is a representative uh, democracy, and we are a constitution that allows uh, working people to be representatives of the people in Alaska. And we have two um, individuals that are professionals in the medical community to offer us advice and guidance as we go forward with some of these important issues for Alaska. And I certainly don't want to uh, uh, put your medical license, uh, Dr. Olson, in jeopardy by stating something on the record that would is something you don't want to do, but we do, the general public may not understand that we do have two uh, licensed professionals in this room today, uh, at a minimum, uh, to provide us advice or at least direction on their perspective of how this licensing would affect our medical community. Thank you, Madam Chair, for the opportunity. I certainly have been um, a medical doctor and was first licensed in 1984, practice medicine out in rural Alaska throughout my uh, medical career and was on the medical board in 1995 and served until I was elected to this office and had to give that position up on the medical board. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Chair.